Hey friends, in this video we're going to look at how to ace your app critique session for your design interview. We're going to look at what to expect from the app critique session, what interviews are expecting you to say, and a framework that you can use to make sure you cover all these points. If you're new here, my name is Rakan, a product designer working in London. Be sure to subscribe for future design related videos and let's get started. So what to expect from an app critique? So an app critique is really a way for companies to gauge the way that you think about a product and the way that you critique an app. And it should really be an app that you use a lot day to day. I highly recommend to you to choose an app that you use because it's going to be really familiar for yourself and you don't have to learn anything new. And the whole point of a session is it's meant to be like a conversation and it's meant to come off quite natural. So what apps should you ultimately choose? I feel like First of all, there's one caveat to this is that if you're interviewing, for example, for, for Google, you are not allowed to critique Google apps. For example, you won't be able to critique Google Maps or YouTube or Gmail. And then the next condition is don't choose an app that contains personal information. For example, a messaging app like WhatsApp or iMessage. So once you've like usually decided an app, the top apps that people usually critique are things like Spotify, Uber, Uber Eats, Deliveroo, and um, ultimately if you're not doing an interview for Google, it could be Google Maps or YouTube or even Apple Maps. So those are usually the top apps that are used across the industry. I highly recommend um, using, like I said, an app that you use day to day. We're gonna look at Spotify in this video because it's a music app of my choice right now. So you've now chosen what app you wanna critique so before the critique, you want to really revise and look at three areas that interviewers are looking for, which are product thinking, visual design and interaction design. And the key thing here is that some interviewers will try and push you and ask you questions around these areas. Some won't. So they expect you to talk through these categories and call out examples whilst you're critiquing the app. So beware, each interview have different styles and ultimately those are the key areas they're looking for and you have to have a good understanding before you even step up into the interview. So make sure you do your revision, especially around the whole product thinking space because some of the stuff you need to have a good knowledge and some good reading and background. That's why I recommend choosing an app that has a lot of public information around these areas. For example, Spotify have dedicated design blogs talking about this stuff. Same with Uber and Google. So before you even open the Spotify app, you want to touch on the whole products thinking space of Spotify. You want to talk about what is the problem that Spotify is ultimately trying to solve. So when Spotify first came about, you could, for example, talk about how people were listening to music on their phones using apps like iTunes to sync their music or Bluetooth in songs. And Spotify changed this, allowing people to stream music on demand. Also, you want to talk about what are the type of sort of users that use Spotify. On their website, they make this clear in their mission statement around how they focus on listeners and artists. So you don't want to forget that there's also artists that use Spotify and there's businesses as well. They have their whole ads revenue business. Another thing that your interview may touch on is the whole business model, how they actually make money. So you want to have a good understanding about the subscription based model for Spotify, as well as they have a free tier as well where they run adverts. So you want to have some good opinions around how this works. Like what do you think of the whole subscription based model that Spotify are using? What do you think of the free plan and the fact that they use adverts? Does it offer enough friction? Also, you want to talk about the future of Spotify as well. For example, it's for listeners and artists, but they're also delving into the whole podcast space. So Spotify is not just a music app. They've invested heavily into the whole podcast space. For example, we, we can talk about them investing over a hundred million dollars into the Joe Rogan experience show. And they've got exclusive deals with, for example, Harry and Meghan Markle, Addison Rae, the TikTok star. This is a showing show the interview that you have a really good understanding around the problem space, the product, and where Spotify is going ultimately in the direction of podcasts as well as music. 
and you can also if you really want to talk about the whole clubhouse audio space it's a brand new format it's a new trend that's out there and spotify are starting to meddle meddling in that space they're starting to create their own solutions around that so your interview will be pretty impressed if you know, if you talk about that as well so before you open the app there's a lot of stuff that you should be able to answer and talk about even if your interviewer might not ask you directly that it's expected that you know this so diving into the spotify app the first thing you want to be looking at is focusing on a persona or a flow for example the listener flow and this could be around discovering new music or having an artist in mind for example they want to listen to taylor swift like how would they go about this so you want to focus on the visual design interaction design and some product thinking as well so let's talk about the components of the information architecture why do they use a tab bar at the bottom on spotify and what are the ios native components they use it what are the advantages of spotify using native components why do spotify use custom components in some places as well what are the advantages between custom and native components so Let's look at the visual design here. Spotify are clearly using a dark theme. Why do you think they use a dark theme here? You can see there's a lot of contrast coming from the album artwork covers that they're using. They've even got a gradient going on and it's heavily personalized towards what you've been listening to. So this gradient is purple because I've been listening to the Design Life podcast. And you wanna talk about how comes you think that they're displaying all these daily mixes at the top, the podcast at the top, like what are your thoughts on the size of these buttons, why do you think they're there in the first place, does this ultimately align to Spotify's vision around recommendation and enabling listeners to get closer to artists and discovering new music, this is all going to be key. And when you scroll down, you want to talk through some of the components that they use, so we can see that they've got a horizontal scrolling carousel here. And why do you think they use this? What are some advantages of this? What are some disadvantages? Well, we can see that on an iPhone 7 here, they can only display two podcasts at once. Uh, but then they use some continuation here. We, the user will be able to see that you can scroll because there's another podcast that's just been cut off here. However, there's a lot of podcasts that you have to scroll through to find your, your top show. So maybe there's a lot of limited discovery here in the sense that users might not actually go to the end of five the Economist podcast. So talk about your thoughts around this component, reasons it works really well. Do you think that older users who might not be as digital literate will understand how to use this component? Ultimately, you can talk about why do you think your top shows is one of the first things that's displayed here as well. Does this go down to Spotify's objective of differentiating themselves to their competitors and investing in a podcast space and being more personalized? They know you listen to podcasts, so they want to push this. So there's a reason to keep your Spotify subscription. Now, when you scroll down, one of Spotify's design principles is around being more human, more unified. And we can see with a copy being like your top shows made for Furkan using your more your personal name, this is gonna make it way more human. And what are your thoughts around the colors that they use as well? We've got a mixture of pastel colors here that are quite soft, they're quite engaging, and they've got personalized pictures of the artists as well, which are really big. Why do you think they use this? Why do you think the copy at the bottom is quite small the body copy and do you think it contrasts well with the black are they just relying on the images for the users to make decisions because images are recognized a lot quicker than text and what are what, what are your thoughts around the size of these components we can see they're all the same size here and you can talk about the advantage of this being able to scale this up and down between different design device sizes you can also talk about again we've got another carousel here with a recently played and we can see the podcast here has a border radius why do you think that the podcasts have a border radius whilst the daily mixes don't why do you think for example an artist here uses a, a circle instead of using a square 
These are all questions that um, you should have a good opinion on and it will help you ultimately get through the design crit. Also talk through like there's a lot of negative space that goes on in Spotify. They don't use any borders to differentiate items. I guess this ultimately allows you to focus more on the content at hand and it solely relies on images to, and spacing to make a clearer decision of what you want to do. So let's, for example, go into the flow of searching for an artist that you have in mind. So we'll, there's a few ways that you could pro probably go to actually find the artist that you want. You could potentially go through your library, but let's focus on search. So as soon as you go through search, you want to talk through what's your thoughts around these top genres that are being displayed here. Like, why do you think pop is displayed as first and then hip hop as second? Why do you think that the album artworks are on a 45 degree angle? And why do you think, for example, they're using purple for pop and orange for hip hop? and they're not ultimately ordered alphabetically as well. And we can see all these podcast categories as well. What's your thoughts around all these colors being used and the fact that they're not ordered alphabetically, like maybe Spotify have done some research around the ordering of these items and you wanna talk about this as well. So when you press search, you want to talk through maybe like this interaction that happens, like the keyboard ultimately opens straight away. What's your thoughts around this as well? And what's your thoughts around the copy that's being displayed as well? So as soon as you press search, there's a lot that goes on. Like you've just typed two letters, you want to talk through maybe the, the tabs at the top here, the little filters that they've got. In Android, they call these chips. Why do you think that the, this sorted by top? Like, what's your thoughts around this interaction here? Why do you think that um, that with TA only Taylor Swift being displayed? Are there ultimately other artists of Spotify really confident in their decision behind knowing that you listen to Taylor Swift that they only needs to display Taylor Swift here? The same with when you scroll down, how comes they only display a, a certain amount of albums and a certain amount of songs? How comes it's, it's quite limited when you scroll down? There's a lot of things that you can talk about here as well. So this is how you go through the app critique. You want to talk for a mixture of visual design and mixture of interaction design. Like what's your thoughts around this massive album artwork cover? Does it make you feel more connected to the artist? Why is a copy of Taylor Swift so big here? Is it because it allows the user to recognize they're on the right page here? What's your thoughts when you scroll down of this fixed navigation bar of a floating action bar with a play and shuffle button here as well? There's a lot that you can talk through. They usually last between um, 45 minutes to an hour. So you have plenty of time to go through different interactions. Just make sure you tick them through. And if the interviewer isn't actually hinting around questions, make sure you tick them off personally. But you want the conversation to be personal and human and you don't want it to feel too scripted. So don't worry too much. As long as you're using an app they use day to day, you should be fine. The last thing we can talk about on, on this screen is the user, maybe they want to play a song. So what's your thoughts around this uh, menu bar that's uh, jumping up and down here? So we want to talk about this sheet that comes up here and you can talk, there's a lot that you can talk about this interaction. You can spend like 10, 15 minutes talking about this by itself, to be honest the way the interaction falls ultimately behind the nav bar. What's the thoughts around this? How come Spotify, for example, doesn't display the volume of the song? They only display the play button, the next button, and the previous button. Do you think these buttons are universal enough for them to have no copy? Will users recognize this? And they have some motion going on displaying the entire song here. 
because they can't fit it into the screen, but they want to keep it on the single line. What's your thoughts around that as well? So these are all great questions that um, you should have some answers to. And again, it is your personal opinion as well as using your intuition. Understanding Spotify's principles will really help you. Um, design principles will help you answer these questions, but I feel like you won't be able to predict every question that will be asked. Just have a good opinion around this. So there you have it. That's me going through Spotify, doing a quick app critique. You want to prepare well for your app critique and know your app. When you go to the interview, the interviewer will exp be expecting you to have an app in mind and be able to go through the app, knowing the mission statement, the product space really well. Your interview will be saying it's a casual conversation and you don't have to prepare too much. To be honest, those are all lies and they will expect you to know the app really well. Like bear in mind that the interviews and have got loads of participants that are doing app critiques and they're pretty prepared as well. So you want to make sure you stand out and you know your stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new here, my name is Farrakhan again, a product designer working in London. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for future design related videos. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.